Come on. Tune in and join the view. Well, good morning. I guess you have another view right now. But welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Pastor Dale Fontenot. Welcome to our services here at New Life Church of God. Our home base is here in Palmetto, Louisiana. We're so grateful that you've tuned in. Even as we continue to gear up and to engage in a brand new year. Ah, how wonderful it is to know that. Our time together today, our message today, is a message that calls us to times of consecration. As we fully engage in this year, 2024, uh, our text will be the infamous text, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. We'll look at verses 11 through 16 uh, as we bring the message on today. So we welcome you to worship with us today, to pray with us today, to consecrate yourselves with us today as we believe heaven's best for us, as we have that authority and we have that right. Be encouraged. Know that God is still on the throne, and we want to be expectant and excited about what God is doing. So join us now as we worship the Lord on this Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, holiday weekend as we recognize the, uh, the divine message that he shared with us. We worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because of using men and women, even as Dr. King was used. So be a part of the solution. Be a part of the redemptive work of God in this time, in this year. Come, join us in worship. Until to make this part, we need only open our eyes 
read our newspapers, look at our televisions, and look around in our communities. And we know that we are not yet at the point where we can boast of clean hands in the area of brotherhood. I mention the fact that lynchings have about ceased, but other things are happening just as tragic. I can remind you of the fact tonight that over the last 18 months, more than 13 or 14 Negro and white civil rights workers have been brutally and murdered all across the South. And if one would look at the jury system, look at the courts, you would soon discover that in most cases nobody has even been convicted for all of these murders. This reveals that we have a long, long way to go. I mentioned the fact that we made strides in voter registration. We have a new voting rights bill, and this is marvelous. But there are still areas where our Negroes who seek to register and vote confront economic reprisals. And I submit to you tonight that in places like Lowndes County in Alabama, in numerous counties in Mississippi, people have been put off, thrown off the land and put out of that little humble. As we join in our call to worship on this uh, winter Sunday morning, uh, again, this is part of the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, holiday weekend, and uh, we remember the significance of um, a man used by God to achieve divine purposes, and we recognize that, and we'll have a time of remembrance later on in our services also. So we uh, welcome you to New Life Church of God, our home base is here in Palmetto on this winter, uh, uh, winter Sunday, and you know it's already warm enough outside. We can anticipate what is to come throughout the week, and uh, we want to be ready for that. But may we be, even as David was in Scripture, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Uh, check the forecast uh, a week out. We know a lot of things change, but it's supposed to be 24 degrees next Sunday morning. We'll be here. We'll be here, Lord. We'll, we'll be here indeed, and we're so grateful that it's a comfortable place for us to come to spend these moments in worship in the Lord. And as we worship the Lord, we invite you to worship the Lord corporately. We welcome you to sing with us. We welcome you to praise the Lord in the raising of the hands and the clapping of the hands, uh, in the shout of glory, hallelujah, to the Lord as we worship the Lord. Uh, and there is freedom to worship the Lord. For if, if he is good, if he is powerful, if he is all of that, he's worthy of our giving worship. So even as the, the outward expressions of worship are in order as we worship corporately, I, I believe that all of us can have something on the inside, a fire on the inside, that whatever is hardened, whatever is callous to God, that we can throw that off aside. We can let our fleshly person know that, oh no, our spirit that has been redeemed will come through you, will set you down, that we can worship the Lord, that we can say amen, that we can lift up holy hands before God, that we can open our voices and make a joyful noise. We may not be the singing of some congregations as far as getting on a tune, but that does not stop us from making a joyful noise yeah. to the Lord, yeah. for he is good. Father, we welcome you into this place as we welcome you into our hearts. Yeah. Lord God, I thank you that you warm our hearts. Lord God, and so may we be able to focus with our minds and with our spirit. May our spirit man be able to rule over whatever is troubling our minds, whatever is troubling our hearts. Yeah. For your word says that the redeemed of the Lord say so, who we have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So we are redeemed and we will worship you in spirit and in truth. We overcome and overwhelm whatever hinders our worship, whatever hinders our mind from falling. 
focusing on you and praising you, our salvation and our strength, our deliverer and our help. You are worthy of praise. Yeah. So we welcome you into this place, into this space, as we welcome you into the space of our lives, yeah. as we welcome you into the spaces of those that are joining us online. We worship you today in spirit and in truth. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
will that yeah. is yeah. deliverance. Yeah. That through yeah. such a time as this has come, we'll face it. We got some promises in your word that you would never leave us and that you would never forsake us. Father God, we look to the hills from which come down help our help coming down from land, but it can't come down. So I thank you this morning that it needs me after him. I give you praise, Father God. I lift up those that are sick, those that are heavy burdened on this morning, those that are hurting in our community. Father God, I see your word that heals the land on this morning. Father God, I see your word that delivers on this morning. Father God, I see your word for every area of our life. Father, you see in your word for the spirit of heaven is put on the glow of yes, praise. praise. So I see that word this morning, Father yes. God, that anybody that's suffering with depression, that anyone that's suffering with oppression, Father God, that they yes. listen to your word on this morning, and they will put on the garment of praise. And in yes. that praise, yes. they will begin to worship the truth and the living yes. God. They will fall down on their knees yes. and fall down on their faces and begin to give glory to the King of Kings. Yes. To the Lord of Lord, Lord, we put the five hands up. We magnify your most holy name. Holy is the Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb of God. So I pray that you that you're good at what you're doing, that you're faithful, that you're just and you're completed until the day of Christ. So I give you praise this morning. I give you glory. I honor our great most holy name.
schedule would be like. Some of you have already been notified by your jobs of working at home uh, for the beginning part of the week. We'll see what it's going to be like. Uh, and uh, to God be the glory. We're just going to trust him. We're going to be safe. We're going to make good decisions. Uh, and uh, we're going to be alert even as we move through this particular week. So again, those of you who are joining us online, so grateful that you are here today and pray that even through, uh, uh, through technology that you can sense the presence of the Lord. We want to sense what you have too. So uh, give your best heart and praise even through your devices and uh, we'll sense that even here as we join in the sanctuary here at 445 Campground Road. Very special weekend uh, indeed tomorrow with this nation. Uh, recognizes as it does uh, as a national holiday, the third Monday of the month of January, uh, recognizing the birthday of one who came with a prophetic voice, a prophetic lifestyle, uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, we celebrate his birthday tomorrow, the 15th of January, when actually this year happens to be his actual birthday. Uh, and so even as his life and his voice was prophetic, we're still called to have a prophetic voice for the world, for the culture in which we live in. We're called to have a prophetic lifestyle for the world that we live in. And so we want to uh, take record of that, take uh, note of that, and uh, even as we celebrate uh, his birthday. Uh, we're going to ready ourselves. We have a special reading uh, from part of the proclamation of the White House. Uh, afterwards, uh, our sermonic song today, our sermonic chorus, uh, God has smiled on me. He has set me free. That message of freedom. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The same the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. All right, all right. God has smiled on me. And then after that, we'll come back to you with our message for today. Uh, early in the month of uh, January, the beginning of the new year, uh, our calling for more in 2024, uh, and a call to consecration. Our text of scripture will be taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, a very familiar consecration uh, passage, and so we want to dig into the word and let the word speak unto us on today. So at this time, uh, Sister Ivy uh, Rito will come with us with the proclamation uh, in regards to uh, our holiday, and then followed by our sermonic chorus, God has smiled. Yes. charge of scripture 
Let us never grow weary in doing what is right, for we do not give up, we will reap our harvest in due time. We must be believers, doers, and most of all, dreamers. We must be preparers of the breach and remember that the power to redeem the soul of America lies in all of us, we the people. Amen. 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 Amen.
so. We recognize how glorious God is, how good he is, and what we really deserve. Oh my God, his mercy. Stop, stop. Whatever we really deserve. Glory to God. And his grace continues to increase in our lives more and more and more. I don't care where you are in your spiritual journey, whether you would play in a place that you feel that uh, you're on a good pathway or whether you're struggling, we can all say, God, you have smiled on me. You've been good to me. We recognize that. Oh, yes, Lord. Indeed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Our text of scripture this morning, as we dig into the word today, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, which we read for our hearing, verses 11 through verse 16. As uh, our message today, more in 24, as we've talked about, we are in the beginning stages of introducing our theme for the year. Uh, on last Sunday, uh, we tried to get handles on how to enter to, into a new place with excitement and anticipation and expectation, and knowing that there are the baggage and some things that we bring over to the threshold from the from the old stuff. Yeah. And uh, we learned to introduce some pathways, uh, even as Jesus and his three closest disciples were on the mountain of transfiguration, came down to the mountainside, same old, same old. People complaining, arguing, griping, can't get along. And we gave four tools to help us to enter into a new year with excitement, understanding there's some old stuff that we bring along with us. And then this past Wednesday night in our teaching, we gave the fifth piece of that uh, as uh, his disciples asked, how come you were able to deliver this boy and we were not able to? We, we bound him, we stood in faith, it still didn't happen. And Jesus said, some things come only by prayer and fasting. That was our fifth point in our message from or from uh, this past uh, uh, Sunday, the 7th of January. And here we are, uh, again, still beginning to introduce our theme for the year uh, that rhymes with more. Some of you made some other suggestions also that rhyme what rhymes with 24. Um, uh, but more in 24, uh, this Sunday, this week's uh, teaching and presentation is about uh, a call to consecration a call to consecration as we are seeing the more in 24. And so we're ready ourselves, particularly for the next couple of weeks. Uh, so just a heads up, today's message comes with a uh, with an assignment, if you will, a collective gathering. Those of us in the sanctuary, those of us, those of you who are joining us online, a collective call to consecration. Second Chronicle chapter 7, verse 11, as we start off. When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace and had succeeded in carrying out all the Lord had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace, the Lord appeared to him at night and said, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and ears attended to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. The eyes, my eyes and my heart will always be there. More in 2024, a call to consecration. In case anyone was wondering today, I give the answer, yes, in 2024, God is real. If anybody was wondering whether or not in 2024 of the realness of God, let me cut to the chase. Yes, in 2024, God is still real. God is mighty. God is strong. God is holy. God is all-powerful. God is exceptional. God is great. 
God is salvation. God is light. God is help. God is just. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. 2024 included. So we enter this year and engage in this year with that same reality that God is good and God is here. Now you may think that God is asleep and far, far away. It may feel to you that God is asleep and far, far away. You may think that you and anyone else can get away with your dirt. But we're here to say God is still real. He is not asleep. You may think that the forces of evil and the forces of darkness have overcome good and have overcome God. But don't be mistaken. God is as real today as he has ever been. Don't be mistaken. And so it is with that truth, it is with that confidence that we fully enter and engage with the year 2024. God has blessed us, not cursed us with an extra day in 2024. So if any of you have a birthday on February 29th, then you have turned four years old today, or whatever it may be, as you may count. Because this year is a leap year yeah. to catch up with the rotation of the earth around the sun. 365 and one-fourth days. Those of you who have learned that in the education system, that's why we have leap year. Because every year is not perfectly 365 days, but there is that fourth day, one-fourth day that's left over. And so, as we enter this year with the truth and the reality that God is still real, we have been called to be ready to serve more and ready to lead more. That's why we're gathered here today in what Jesus calls a house of prayer. This is a house of prayer. In the New Testament, Jesus talks about the, 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 the sanctuary, the place that had been set aside, the temple, as a house of prayer. That's why he, he, he ran off the, the, the thieves, the, those who were cheating, those who were selling stuff in the temple. This, don't you know this is, my, this is the, the house of prayer, my father's house of prayer? <laughs> And so we join together in the house of prayer. Those of you who are joining us online, you better consecrate and dedicate your place, your house right now as a house of prayer. Since you're not gathered in this place, let that place be the house of prayer. There's a quote that I have run across by John Wesley, a great 19th century uh, preacher, writer, songwriter. Uh, we sing some of his hymns even on today. Uh, but in one of his quotes, he says, It seems that without God, man can do nothing. But without man, God will do nothing. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again so you may want to get that. He says, It seems that without God, man can do nothing. But without man, God will do nothing. Without people, God will do nothing. Those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ are called to the carpet today to do more for him in 2024. Recognizing that uh, we're not called to just stand on the sidelines twiddling our fingers and saying kumbaya, Lord, kumbaya, and do nothing for God's kingdom. According to Genesis chapter 1, God has given humans dominion over the earth. As he says in verse 27, that you shall have dominion over the fish and over the animals and over the earth. God gave up his right to have dominion in the earth he gave that up to human beings. Genesis chapter 1. He gave up that right. You and I have been created in the image of God. And God says that human people, men, women, boys, and girls, you shall have dominion on the earth. 
We ask the question all the time. We hear people ask the question all the time. Why is this world so wicked? How, why is this world so bad? How come things are so out of control? God says, I've given dominion to you. <laughs> I've given it to you. And until you give it back to me, I can't do anything. Because according to my word, I've given dominion unto you. And so that's why, as John Wesley is saying, without man, God will do nothing. Without people, God will do nothing. God is giving us the meaning on the earth. That's why you have a right to choose whatever you're choosing to do and I guess to live like you're choosing to live because you have dominion. You have been giving that authority. As those of us who have been redeemed from the curse of the law, we do our part in this ruling with dominion in giving dominion back unto God. Those of us who have been born again, our calling, our teaching from this pulpit has continually to be that we give dominion back unto God. Or as we have our working definition of Prayer, as we teach on prayer, it says prayer is about we are giving permission to God to interfere. Mm -hmm. Prayer is about giving God permission <laughs> to interfere. And so we're giving, in essence, dominion back unto God. As we pray to God, we're giving him the right to dominate, to have dominion, to rule. We give that back unto him. Prayer. Giving God permission to interfere, to interfere in our lives, to interfere in our families, to interfere in our world. God, we give you permission to do that. Have your way, God. We say that, we sing that. Do what you want to do as long as you want to. It's more than just a song. It's about giving dominion back into God for him to dominate, for him to rule. Do what you want to do, God. God is looking for those who would give him permission to accomplish his will. That's why God in the flesh taught us, even he taught us how to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? Here in the earth as it is in heaven. God, you are having dominion in heaven. And so because you have given us dominion, as we have been created in your image, if you will, little God with a small g, <laughs> our calling as the righteousness of God oh is to give him permission. Your kingdom, your rule come here in the earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Your will be done here in the earth as it is in heaven. Yes. God, we're giving you permission to rule, yes. giving you permission to reign. And so as we start the year 2024 with the more on our mind, we want to give God more permission to rule and to reign in our lives, in our mess, in our situations, and in the situations and circumstances in our world. So we're called to lead the way and to serve the way for God's will and his kingdom to come here in the earth, for you to rule more in 2024. And so as we live in this world in 2024, we recognize easily that the times that we're living in are very chaotic. Very chaotic. The times that we're living in. News coverage, social media coverage, opening your door, sometimes just looking in your house. Things are very chaotic. The times that we are living in. What's wrong is not right. That's right. And what's right is not wrong. When we're able to perceive and, to, and to, to do this, this is why I encourage those of you under my teaching to be thinkers, to be perceivers, to be aware of what's going on. What's going on around you? That's why I, when I gather, somebody's really helped me. When I gather some of the public spaces where there's the public music going on and I don't have a clue what's going on, there is an app that I touch for. And it gives me what that song, the word, the lyrics of that song of that rap is all about. And people just out there moving. I don't know what y'all. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share some of that with you. 
know, sometimes. But again, I gotta bleep out a lot of those words. Yeah. But if we're not perceptive for what's going on, what was wrong is now right. And what's right is now wrong. What you do? That you don't have to do that. How, that's old school. You don't, you don't have to live like that. There's a new way to live right now. What's right is now wrong. We're living in chaotic times. Chaotic times. Some of some of the folks that's older than me, child, they don't. They're ready to tap out right now. It don't matter if Lord come and get me because this world is going to see. They're like my change is coming, and I'll be happy when my change is coming because everything around me is chaotic. Maranatha, Lord, come, come quickly, as it says in, in, in the book of Revelation. Maranatha, Lord, come quickly. The deceiver, Satan, the deceiver is running games on people. He's running games in our culture. We want to be aware of this. We want to be knowledgeable of this. Again, our calling is not to be the righteous popo. It's not our calling. It's not our calling to be the righteous popo. Oh, you wrong, you wrong, you wrong, you wrong, you wrong. You're wrong. That, that's not our calling to be the righteous popo. Our calling is about giving God permission. Yes. Come and interfere. Yes. Because my interference is not going to be enough yeah. to make the drastic transformational change yes. that is needed. Yes. And so thy kingdom come on God. Thy will be done. Oh. Here in the earth. As it is in heaven. God, if you want me to, I'll be the righteous popo left and right. But, the, uh, but uh, that's not my calling. That's not what we are called to have our PhDs in. But we're definitely called to have our PhDs praying heaven down. Praying heaven down. The deceiver. Our voices in leadership and our hands in service will allow God's kingdom to come, his will to be done. Our text of scripture today, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, we see that the nation of Israel is in trouble. They're in the transition of leadership. King David is now dead. He had chosen his son Solomon to be the ruler. The older son was mad. Junior was mad. <laughs> Oh, um, he was upset, and uh, and so there's a lot of confusion that was going on in uh, the nation of Israel as we engage into our text of scripture. Again, family chaos, family dysfunction in King David's family. There was internal conflict in the nation. King Solomon had <clears throat> had many enemies in the nation. And the children of Israel had <clears throat> enemies outside the nation, and then there was always the threat of economic disaster. Because whenever, whenever there was famine in the land, whenever there were locusts and pestilence that come, that was their economy. And so when that would come, there would be economic chaos in the land. All of this is talked about in 1 Kings uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2 uh, with the transition of, of Solomon becoming king. And we see the condition of the nation of Israel that we can check in by the time we read 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And through all of this, Solomon is king was charged to build a new temple for worship, a new temple for prayer. Parenthetically, he was always also charged to bring his, build his new house, his new palace. But I digress just for a second. But he was called to build a new temple, a place to address the ills of their nation, a place to address the ills of their lives. Oh, what a richness there. A temple to be built to address the ills of the nation, the ills of the world around them. That would be a place. Even as we see in our text of scripture, when it even closed, I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. Verse 15, when now my eyes will be open and my ears attended to the prayers offered in this place, in this space. So beloved, do you know that when we come into the sanctuary, 
it's more than just a religious tradition. It's more than just doing God a favor. It's a place that we've come to address the ills of the world that we live in. It's a place that we address the ills of the communities that we live in. The ills of the families that we are a part of. The ills that are a part of our lives that, that we brought with us from 2023. This is a place to address it. Because God says my eyes and my ears will be attentive unto the prayers offered in this place. I don't know what prayers you've been praying in there. Maybe you've been just numb and just listening. But you're welcome to lift up prayer. When we got prayer time, when we have lulls in our services, and not just to sit there and look and say, ooh, ooh, wow. But the prayers offered in this place. God says, I will hear. I will see. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Ooh, let me check what my, what my venue is going to be today. Let me see if I get that straight. I got some downtime right now. Ah, the prayers in this place. God says, I'll hear, I'll see, I'll take notice yes. of them. Solomon has been charged to develop, to build a place to it uh, where the ills of the nation, the ills of their time would be addressed. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, the Lord, the Lord appears to Solomon at night. And he gives this famous, I call it an address, but uh, again, one that the body of Christ continues to lift up and uh, uh, very well it, it, it reigns true. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I heal their land. Now listen, God just didn't show up uh -huh. and make up stuff as to what he would do here from heaven. Right. He just didn't show up here in verse 14 and say, all right, this is what I'm going to do, Solomon. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is how it's going to do. He just didn't make this stuff up here from heaven, forgiving their sin, healing their land. Understand that in the chapter prior, chapter 6, Solomon had given God permission to do all of this. What we see in verse 14 is an answer to a prayer that was already prayed. That's why it says in verse 12, the Lord appeared to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. I have heard your prayer. Solomon had already been praying. He just wasn't trying to arrange the seats for the dedication service in the morning, but Solomon had already been praying. We look back in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, hey, verses 19, 19 and 20. We can just sit, take just glimpse, glimpses of this chapter, but this whole chapter is talks about the prayer of Solomon. Verse, verse 19, yet, Lord, my God, give attention to your servant's prayer and plead for mercy. Boy, he's been crying out by this time. <laughs> Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence. Verse 20, may your eyes be open towards this temple day and night. You guys say, this place I'll be there. Yes. So I'm already praying, may this temple be a place for you. A place for which you say that you would put your name there. And may you hear the prayer your servant prays towards this place. Hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel. When they pray towards this place, hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive them. See, God didn't make it up in chapter 7, verse 14 and 15, I forgive you, land. Then we can go on a bit further, verse 25. We can jump down to verse 25. Then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land you gave to them and their ancestors. Verse 26, when the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, and when they pray towards this place and give praise to your name and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them, verse 27, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people, Israel. Teach them the right way to live and send rain on the land you gave your people as an inheritance. I can just cheat a little bit more. Verse 28, when famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when evil besiege them in any of their cities, whatever disaster and disease may come, and when a prayer or a plea is made by anyone 
A month. Wait a minute. I got anyone in here? Yes. Anyone. Anyone among the people of Israel. Be aware of their afflictions and, and pains and, and spreading out their lands, hands towards this temple. And then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Forgive, forgive, and deal with everyone according to what. See, Solomon's been praying this all. So when we pray, Lord, heal my toes. My toes, Lord. Heal my toes. Lord, you know they took off my favorite program off of TV. Lord, help me make them bring back my favorite. Man, and heaven has to hear that stuff? Yes, Lord. I can just imagine sometimes heaven hearing some of my prayers. Oh, Lord. Really? Really? Who wants to move up to me? Really? Yes. <laughs> When we have heaven's attention, and we tell heaven, I'm going to get back with you. I'm going to figure something out in a while. Ah, Solomon had already prayed this prayer. So by the time we get to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and when God says, God says he would do what he would do, and I will heal your land, it's an answer to prayer. So friends, people praying goes before God's doing. Just like we said from John Wesley's quote, without people, man, yes. God will not move, right. will not work. Mm -hmm. And so our calling at the beginning of 2024 is to pray <coughs> and fast. Pray <laughs> and fast. Yeah. I'm going to interject that now since that was part of our lesson this, uh, this past middle of the week. Our prayer and fasting is also about our consecrating ourselves for more of what God will do in 2024. You, like me, we all need God to do more for us in 2024. And so it's not about us begging God to do anything in that particular vein what we are unworthy for because we're going to set our hearts and our attention unto what God is desiring to do that we can give him permission to do that. God is desiring to do more than heal our big toe. He's desiring to do more than uh, bring back programs that we can watch. He's desiring to do more. And so the scripture says, humble yourself. And literally what this means, to, to give this, uh, uh, the opposite of Humbling ourselves is pride. The, act, the opposite of to humble ourselves is pride. So when we talk about times of consecration, pride. Well, I'm not trying to do that. I'm too good for that. I don't need that. That's too hard. I ain't gonna try. That's pride. So it says, humble yourself. That that we think that we're too good for, we don't have time for, this doesn't apply to me, I'm not good enough, I'm not bad enough. And so, humble yourself and pray, giving God permission. And seek my face. Seek my face is part of what the whole consecration message is. That we're not giving attention to the stuff that we would normally give attention to 24-7, whatever our weekly schedule would go for, but that we would take the time needed and necessary to seek God. God, what are you doing? God, what are you smiling on? God, you said you smiled on me. I don't see it, so let me see your face to see how you smile. Because all I sense is frowning. You must be mad at me because of what I've done. See his face. Turn from your wicked way. We know the obvious part of wicked, but sometimes it's so easy for us. Well, I'm not wicked. I got nothing wicked to do. If you remember when Jesus teaches in the New Testament about um, about the, the talents that were given, that's right. One five, and the one that he gave one to, what did that one? What did the, did the man do with that one talent? He buried. And when the master came back, he called him, oh, you wicked servant. 
You have something God gave you, and you wouldn't use it. That's right. Jesus says, you will. You will. You will. You know you can do it. Oh, I don't know. You will. You will. I know you went out there clubbing and shooting up everybody last night, but you ain't using what God gave you. about wicked when people are always looking for a miracle. God wants you a miracle, a miracle. I'm like, you wicked generation. Always looking for a miracle. Always looking for something great. I don't believe you God because you send a miracle. You're wicked. That's right. Jesus teaching. The generation is a wicked generation. You ain't gonna believe nothing until you can see something great happen. And so God says, if my people, if that's a condition. I'm going to do all of this, God says. I'm going to do all of this. I am, I'm going to hear from heaven. I'm going to forgive their sin. I'm going to heal their land. I'm going to hear all of their prayers. If condition. My people. My people who are called by my name. I'm going to church. I'm going to church. Oh, my God. my people are called by my name. And so God moves us into our time of consecration. God's kingdom coming, his will being done, is a direct result of the consecration of his people. Right. And for our altar call today, we're calling you for the next few weeks for times of consecration in your life. For 2024. Times of consecration. And what do I do to consecrate myself? We just saw the four things that we are called to engage ourselves in. Humbling ourselves. Humbling is the opposite of pride. What I am going to do was not necessary. Humbling ourselves. Praying. Seeking his face. Turning from our wicked. So for the next two weeks, the calling is to engage ourselves in this. And what's helping us to accomplish all of this? We welcome and invite you to times of fasting. Times of fasting, of denying this flesh. Denying this flesh. Times of fasting. Whether it be for a day, whether it be for 14 days, whether it be for a half a day. I understand that there are some medical conditions that will prevent some things. Fasting, as we talked just a little bit on this past Wednesday night, uh, it's about withholding some things that are pleasurable for us. And so, Lord, for the next two weeks, all right, no Buddha, okay? Whatever you may, whatever, whatever you have to deny yourself from, probably some of our health issues already. Uh, but times of prayer, times of prayer, times of fasting that we can see, God, what are you up to? What's the more that you're up to in 2024 in my life, in my family, in my church, my community, in the world around us? Times of consecration during the next two weeks for you to set your own agenda far as the times that you would take seriously, those four aspects of consecration, humbling ourselves, praying, seeking God's face. God, what are you smiling on? Your will, what are you smiling on? Turning from our wicked ways, availing ourselves. Stop saying, God, I ain't gonna do nothing until I can see you do it real good. You have left me behind so many times until I can see you do something. Turning from our wicked ways. Says, then I hear, I hear from heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God says, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Times of chaos and revelation. We know that it's not our time. We know that God is not in the times of chaos that's going on in our lives and our families in our communities, in our neighborhoods, among our males. 
whatever the situation and circumstances may be. I call them, it's being called to prayer, to consecrating ourselves. Calling us to lead more. This is about leading. This is about serving more. Times of consecration. Oh, God wants to do more, not just in your life, but in the times and the places and the spaces in which we live, week in and week out. I want to pray with you today. <coughs> Again, wherever you are on the spiritual realm, there may be someone who wants to give their life to Jesus Christ today. I welcome you to do that even as we pray together. And even as we collect our, our spirits, our thoughts, the Lord with his hand is done. I didn't have my meals planned for the next two weeks. And now he's calling me to some type of fasting. He's calling me to some type of turning off the TV, getting off social media for the X number of hours or X number of days so that I can seek God's face. So that I can get in tune with myself and turn from these wicked ways so that I'm not offering my best unto God. I'm withholding it because somebody else can be doing it or needs to be doing it. Turning from our wicked ways, humbling ourselves, identifying wherever there is that pridefulness that's in our lives because God wants to do more. And God says, I'm not going to move in the world unless the people start moving first. This is our call to lead more in 2024. To give heaven permission in our lives. In our, it's about leading. It's about serving. Which goes to the crux of our theme for the year that God wanted to do more in 2024. Let's pray together. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, even as we have given this time and this focus unto you today beginning of a new year. Some have already set the resolve to whatever happens this year, we're going to going to happen. Father, we let it be known in our own quiet times that we have enough of that stuff in 2023. And we don't have to let it continue to bombard us and we become so helpless and hapless in 2024. And your word is better, so oh God. Why me? Why us? Why this place? We believe, Lord God, that you have even preordained for us to be a part of this gathering, part of this fellowship of those that are in person and those that are viewing today, oh God. And so we welcome you and we want to say yes into your calling. Yes into times of consecration. Even as, Lord God, we trust every individual under the sound of my voice to send their own gauge into carrying out these four principles and steps in consecration, humbling ourselves, praying, seeking my face, turning from our wicked ways. So Father, you said if my people would do this, then you would hear we want our requests to be more and more, to be greater and greater than just my two and no more. To bring about real world transformation in the communities in which we live, in the neighborhoods in which we're from, and from the culture that we're in, from the population that we represent, to all the ills, Lord God, that become a part of our land, that become a part of what was wrong is now right. So we take authority, first of all, in the spiritual realm, even as we seek your face and humbling ourselves, oh God, to know that that leadership starts with us. We're here this weekend, Lord God, celebrating the life of an awesome leader who led in a special way, or who served in a special way, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And yet you're calling, Lord God, if you will, some little kings of Yes, Lord. To lead and to serve, Lord God, yes. in the lives that we live and yes. the consecration, Lord God, that's yes. being done, Lord God, and that we can give you permission, Lord God. We can bombard yes. heaven, Lord God, in what you desire to do and desire to do, Lord God. Yes. 
We bless you, Lord God, yes, as we accept and anticipate, Lord God, what you want to do, Lord God. Uh, do what you want to do, Lord God, as long as you want to. We want you to have your way, Lord God. We're giving you permission, Lord God, to take dominion, to rule, Lord God, over our families, rule over our communities, Lord God, to rule over our state, our nation, our world, oh God. Leaders have to emerge, Lord God. Servants, Lord God, need to be elevated, oh God. And we're taking up that mantle of leadership and of serving, Lord God. Bring back, bring about a brighter day, Lord God. A day that our children do not have to mourn, Lord God. A day when our children can excel, Lord God, in ways, Lord God, we could have never imagined, Lord God. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for hearing the prayers that are offered in this place, oh God. Yes, Lord. Elevate our thoughts. Elevate, Lord God, our concerns, our prayer requests, Lord God. And we can bombard heaven, Lord God, with all that heaven is desiring to do. Thank you, God. said you, you said you would forgive your people. Yes, Lord. Yes. Forgive us, Lord. All the unrighteousness, yes, yes. standards of sin in our lives. Yes, Forgive us, Lord God. Thank you for attending Thank to our prayers offered into this place. Yes. We rededicate this sanctuary, this gathering. We rededicate this space, Lord God, for you. Hear the prayers offered in this place. May your name, Lord God, be heard in this place as you are attentive unto your name, O oh God. Be with us forever. May your eyes, may your heart always be here, O oh God. No matter if we messed up, no matter if we missed the mark, we're coming back to you, O oh God. Coming back unto you. So Father, we all need to make a decision. How we outline our next two weeks personally. We've been called to times of consecration, overarching with times of fasting, denying our flesh, denying our way. Many more days to come in the year 2024 as this earth rotates around the sun. Come to believe for the best. Come to believe, Lord God, even in our time of leading and serving, there will be others who will come into your kingdom. Others who will come, Lord God, unto a life of righteousness. Oh, yeah. Because they are leaders, because they are servants. I thank you, Lord God. As simple as we may be, it matters. It's making a difference. Holy Spirit, confirm your word within our hearts. Confirm your word, Lord God, within our lives that we can sense and we can know you, Lord God. That we can carry out our time of consecration. We can do this. We're going to lay down that pride. Say as we can, we don't need to. Pastor, handle that part of it. Lord God, may we humble ourselves. Search us, Lord. time in this spirit of prayer. Thank you, thank you, Father. How great you are, oh God. Oh, yes, yes, Lord. Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.
and she knows. And know that we're called the next two weeks. Times of prayer, times of fasting, times of humbling ourselves, seeking God's grace. If my people, why? So that he can heal our land. So that we can provide those opportunities and we can be leading, we can be served. So thank you for your attentiveness and to the message for your acceptance of the assignment. God is great, he's mighty, he's strong, he's able to do more than we can think. How is it that fast? How great is God? And so we don't want heaven to be tripping over our prayer request. Oh my, we want to really give heaven something to be attentive unto. Besides, I'm totally going to be told. We want to bombard heaven with the great and with the mighty. Thank you. We're so glad that you tuned in today and prayerfully accepting the call for times of consecration. Not just for those who are over the age of 60, but for everyone. For, for everyone. Yeah. So, God bless you indeed. Again, as we even announced, uh, even on tomorrow, you know very well by now, the National Remembrance. Uh, we know that the weather is turning on tomorrow uh, sometimes, and so um, we're, we're grateful that we can uh, recognize that what God is doing, even as we speak about the weather changing. Let's be safe. Um, we know that um, particular, I think it's uh, Wednesday morning, uh, mm -hmm. lows are supposed to be in the teens in this neck of the woods. Space is, let's be safe. Three feet distance from anything around your heating sources. Okay? Um, you may be fearful that sometimes senior citizens will just not do the heat because what my light bill is going to be. Yeah. Listen, those of you that's a part of part of new life, and you get to the point that next month you get your bill, too much, can't handle it, well, come talk to us. Don't put yourself out and you got the double pneumonia because you didn't want to get a double light bill. Let's uh, let's be sensible, but sensible, we trust God even for the, the utilities and the bills that are to If they come, Cisco got a hell of a nice sending bill. Y'all know that? We'll talk about that later this time. Cisco got a hell of a nice sending bill. Uh huh. Or the church. 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 Let me just give you a little insight in that. In that, you know, Cisco turned off our lights in this building. It's connected. You didn't pay your bill. Didn't get a bill, Cisco. So you didn't just, you, 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 uh, you uh, didn't get your disconnect. No, we didn't get a disconnect. You. All we got was the lights off. No. So, and I went to the post office, got the same bills I got from last month. The, 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 the meter for this building is not included in the bill. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, we're going to check it. We get that straight. Aside, you know, aside. Again, thank you for, thank you for, yes. <laughs> Saturday, Lord willing, again, the women of the church, uh, our, your monthly meeting will take place this Saturday, 10 a.m. at our Nursing Home Road campus, 407 Nursing Home Road, uh, 10 a.m., the ladies' uh, ministry will be gathering this coming Saturday, Lord willing. Uh, Sunday school class is going forward. Our Sunday school teacher is, has been on us. We're not starting on time, so we're going to do a better job. Uh, 
start in no time, but 9 o'clock our adult Sunday school. Second Harvest Food Distribution is this coming Thursday and Friday, the 18th and the 19th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we recognize that indeed. Um, she's not in the sanctuary now, but do we want to be prayerful and support of Sister Bianca Vidal. This past Thursday, she was selected as the Vice President of the St. Andrew Perry School Board. And, uh, so we're going to be praying for her. What that means is next year she should be president of the school board. Yeah. Yeah. But again, prayerful support of Sister Bianca. Speaking of uh, serving, we have three ministry coming up here soon. All right, next on our agenda. <laughs> Men, we got for women you meet in Saturday. Men, we got parade ministry coming up for Saturday and February. So we have more on that uh, coming up. College students, starting back the semester. I know we have Nadia. Um, Nadia, you gonna represent everybody. Come on up here if you meet me, Nadia. Our college students. Um, um, again, the second semester. Erica, come on up, Erica. Johnny's. Now you're going to come tell me. Now you're going to come up and meet me. Miss <laughs> Nash. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Come on up around. Ooh, we got somebody that's starting school. Nursing is going all the way around. All right. All right. You're going to get everybody else to say first. You're going to stand. You're going to stand on my right side, my power side. All right. All right. All right. Everyone's coming up for you this semester. Oh, I have five classes this semester. Um, I'm looking at this one as my last semester for my full classes. So the fall semester will just be my internship. Uh, it'll be a good break, and I should be graduating in December. <laughs> Whew, I'm praying. We almost done. Almost. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, Nadia. Hey, Nadia. Hey, Nadia. Hey, Nadia. I have four classes this semester, and this should be my last one. I should be graduating in May. <laughs> What's what's going on in your college career? Because you have you you have an associate's degree already, right? Yes, okay. and I'm going back for medical assistance. Okay, <laughs> South Louisiana Community. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. We have a former graduate. graduate.
Kingdom Saints, watch over them, Lord God. Thank you for 2024 doing more for them. To yeah. God be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good news all the way around. Additional news. We're so grateful for our students as you continue on. Brother Vaughn, I need you to just step here just for a moment. Um, recognizing our December birthdays. That's all. That's Proceeded out of the mouth of God in the face of God's head. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 